Hey everybody, Chief Meteorologist Brad Petovich. We've got our tropical system, potential tropical cyclone. Don't get caught up in the naming. Um, it's going to be a tropical storm, Ophelia. That's what it's going to be. You got to treat this just like a tropical storm right now, regardless of the labeling. And that's why you need to focus. We'll focus on the impacts here because here it is. It's clearly spinning up pretty quickly this morning, but it's not your typical tropical system. If you look at it, there is a lot of dry air wrapping around this side of the storm. There's a front attached to it. Um, all of the worst weather is on the north and northwest side. So it's kind of a subtropical system. If you've ever wondered the difference, that's kind of the difference. Instead of being symmetrical and everything close to the center, what you see in a, a subtropical system, it looks like a nor'easter. And that's kind of what this is. And remember, nor'easters are because of the wind they produce out of the northeast, not the location in the country where they form. We get nor'easters all the time here off the east coast of Florida, the southeast, as they move up the coast. The reason they get that name is because as you're seeing today, northeast winds are pumping in to eastern North Carolina. So here's the forecast track. It's pretty straightforward. The only thing that's a little bit up in the air is kind of if the center will relocate back to the northwest or over in here. So there is a little bit of wiggle room overall, but the impacts probably aren't going to change all that much as we go into the afternoon hours. You already see some of the heavier rain bands moving into uh, parts of North Carolina. Here's a look at um, the surge potential, and I'm going to show you quickly from the Hurricane Center, their peak storm surge. Uh, this is going to be the biggest story. The most dangerous part of this storm is the surge for eastern North Carolina. You see some of these bays, Pamlico, um, and basically the areas around the New Centaur River um, sounds. That's where we're going to see three to five feet of storm surge. Out to the Outer Banks, two to four feet, and then up into Chesapeake, the lower Chesapeake, two to four feet. That's really going to be, to me, the, the worrisome part about this. So we'll zoom in a little bit closer and you can see what happens here. The new Centaur rivers are susceptible to storm surge, especially when the wind is pushing water into the mouth of the river and you get some rain inland, not as some, some of the heaviest rain we haven't seen in a while, but it's still some heavy rain. And what happens in this setup is rain from over the land is trying to flow into the rivers out to sea and you've got storm surge moving up the mouth of the river. So that typically causes big time issues for areas around New Bern, Washington. Um, you know the typical spots. This is where we're worried about the potential for flooding. And even up here towards Albemarle Sound, there could be some flooding, but that's the main concern. It's gonna be storm surge. So if you live in Eastern North Carolina, make sure you're paying attention to your local officials on this. As far as wind speeds are concerned, uh, the maximum winds will be in the Outer Banks. Folks out there, you're probably gonna see tropical storm force gusts um, and maybe winds close to 50, 60, 65 miles per hour inland, you're probably talking more gusts to 40. Now, these are gusts sustained probably in the 20 to 30 mile per hour range. And as you go to the west, you'll see there's a pretty sharp gradient. It's going to be a windy day tomorrow um, for most of the Carolinas, but it's really windy along the coast. Precipitation wise, again, this is going to be mainly along and east of I-95. The, the, the back edge of this is going to be really interesting. This will depend on the track. We could go from a tenth of an inch to a half an inch in here. And then out in here, you could get some areas that could get seven to 10 inches of rain. Charlotte, I-77 West, there may not be any rain at all. Um, it's not, a, it's not a, a slam dunk, but just be, you know, be ready that, hey, there could be a passing shower, but some areas could see absolutely nothing out of this system. So as far as timing, the worst of this is gonna start tonight and be most of the day on Saturday. Let's show you future cast as it moves northeast. All right, so let's time this out. We're going to use some short range rapid refresh models to kind of time out the rain here. We know the surge is going to be a huge issue for folks in eastern North Carolina, but the rain's going to start moving in today as well. How far west the rain is going to move is really going to depend on where the center kind of relocates and forms. And again, if you're in the Charlotte region west, I do think there's going to be rain tomorrow, but the chances may be 30, 40 percent. You can see the heavier rain bands are going to be north of the line, basically, of the track. So wherever the center goes, we're likely going to see some pretty strong, you know, bands of rain forming near the center and then to the north. So all in this area is probably going to see the heaviest rainfall. Back edge, again, some of this, even though the, the, the models are showing some of this rain back here, it's going to have a tough time. The air is pretty dry on the edges back here. So this will be really sharp. It could be just some light sprinkles. We go into Saturday morning. So Saturday morning, 7 a.m., probably going to be moving into eastern North Carolina, but all the mess is already here. You see all that heavy rain. We go through Saturday during the afternoon. You've got afternoon plans. 
Uh, there could be rain around Charlotte, but you see the heavier rain is going to be probably eastern or central North Carolina. And again, the gradient from a ton of rain to no rain is going to be pretty tight. Now, the short rain guidance does show a band trying to move into the Charlotte area afternoon tomorrow, and that's all going to depend on the movement of this low. I'll be honest with you. It could be here. It could be here or it could be here. And that's going to take this back edge and move it this way or move it that way. So I'm not trying to hedge my bets here or try to be wishy-washy. I'm being completely transparent. Where that track is, is going to dictate where that back edge is. But if I'm planning anything Saturday, I'm going to plan for rain just in case. Because if that shifts a little further west, these are going to be windy, wet, cold rain bands moving in. And you can see Saturday evening shows a lot more rain over us before it starts to lift out as we go into Sunday morning. And then things kind of weaken completely. So I'll do this whole 48-hour loop here. And you could see, I would plan for rain, especially from Charlotte East. If I'm in the mountains, I'm probably going to hedge my bets a little bit more and say, hey, I think we're going to miss out completely on this. But in the Piedmont, I would not write off the chance of seeing some rainfall as this moves in. I will post updates today and tonight. Again, if you're in eastern North Carolina, please, 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 please make sure you're taking this very seriously in those flash flood and storm surge prone areas around the Noose and Tar Rivers. In the Outer Banks, we're likely going to see overwash with some big waves and stuff out there, but nothing you haven't seen already. Um, again, it's really going to be those, those sounds, the Amal uh, Pamlico, Albemarle Sound, Noose River, Tar River, you know, the mouth of those rivers. That's where we're going to have some big time issues with surge starting tonight, but going through tomorrow. Be safe and stay tuned for updates.